So I've been I've been out of the YouTube loop for a minute. I've been kind of taking a break to focus on like school and other things like that. Uh, but I was kind of waiting to do a big video and I was kind of waiting for something big to drop. And I kind of wanted to do like a huge album review. I just went through a ton of albums that came out recently I haven't talked about yet, like new Vin Staples, new 5EO, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but then uh, I didn't get around to it. So now it's Thursday night. Uh, there's a new Push Up Fucking T album. So that's my priority now. Um, I've the funny thing about Pusha T is he's the kind of rapper I've been like a general fan of for a pretty long time now. Uh, but it wasn't until this album's rollout started that I actually thought to myself, I really got to check out that guy's solo catalog. So I spent the past week listening to uh, the three clips albums and uh, all of the albums that Pusha T put out solely. Um, I'd already heard Daytona. That was the only Pusha T album I heard. I, I fucking love that album. That's honestly one of my all-time favorite albums. Um, and overall, I was uh, going into this album very excited on that regard. Uh, on top of that, this album has had some really fucking solid singles. I really like Diet Coke. Not everybody was crazy about the track. I thought the beat was great. I thought the flow was great. The energy was great. It was just classic Pusha T rapping about Coke, and I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the track with uh, Nigo, Hear Me Clearly, which is on Nigo's album, was is actually a pretty good track. I quite enjoy that one. And uh, uh, Neck and Wrist with Jay-Z and Pharrell is also a phenomenal track, and it's definitely one of my favorite, best tracks I've heard all year. Everybody on that track kills it. It is just such a fun, a great track. It's grown on me a lot since I reacted to it, because when I reacted to it, I was like, it's pretty good, but I didn't know how I felt. Uh, in hindsight, it's an amazing track, and it's actually one of my favorites of the year. Uh, so overall, that means I'm not going to react to all three of those tracks because I already have. I don't have a reaction over Hear Me Clearly, but I don't really think I need to. Uh, so overall, uh, we got um, we got some pretty cool features on this one, too. We got uh, two uh, more Kanye features. One listed as featuring Ye. The other one listed as featuring Kanye West, so I don't know. There's also a Cuddy feature, which always excited to see that one. Um, Jason and Farrell, I've already heard that one. There's a Lil Uzi Don Tolliver feature, which I'm interested to hear how that one sounds. Uh, and then at the end, we have... Uh, a new clips track that has labyrinth on it fun fact labyrinth even has a drop tonight the euphoria soundtrack that i'm also excited about and i probably will talk i might i don't know if i'll talk about it but i'm gonna listen to it definitely uh so yeah push it t it's almost dry a uh, cool cover art i really wish it was just lana del rey's the coke thing that was so cool um but no instead we're just getting you know this and it's fine I do quite like the cover art. I think it's really creative. Uh, so yeah, Push the Tease is almost uh, dry. Let's get into it. Uh, track number one, we got Brambleton. Um, I don't really have anything to say. Let's let's hear what Push the Tease is bringing to the table on a new record. Let's go. And I just realized my speaker's not on, so I gotta fix that. We was out in Brambleton after Pooh got hit. Fuck that bass, bro. Push is so good at intros. That just hit me now. God, he's so good at the intro track. Man, Push is sliding. That's a good, great beat, great beat. Okay, this one's produced by Pharrell, which I kind of assumed. It seemed like Pharrell production. I just watched that movie, so I actually got that Godfather reference. Nice, I feel proud of myself there. God. Man, I was, because it hit me while I was listening to that track. If you go through the Push catalog and just check out the intro tracks, even with uh, some of the clip stuff, even though I, I don't really like clips as much as I like Pusha T solo work, um, you talk about the intro to uh, Hell Hath No Fury and Lord Willen, they're really fucking good intros. I forget the, what the intro to uh, Till the Casket Drops was, um, but then when I was thinking what was King Push on uh, My Name Is My Name, that's an incredible intro. Uh, intro, the intro track to uh, King Push, the album, uh, is also a great intro. And the other one, If You Know You Know, is one of my favorite intros in any album in hip-hop. And it's not even my favorite track on that album, but that fucking beat and the way it moves, God, it's so good. And Push's flow is incredible on this. Push basically did a similar thing here, though. He had this hard-ass beat with great Pharrell production that I like because it has a similar sound of neck and wrist. It has that similar kind of bass sound and I really fucking like it. It's something I had to adjust to a bit, but now I really appreciate it. And I think Push is just flowing like so smoothly over it. The thing about Push is I don't really ask a lot of him. He's not the kind of rapper 
where like like with Kendrick's new album, which I haven't talked about yet. Kendrick's new album is in a few weeks, and I cannot believe that. Um, in four weeks now, um, Kendrick, um, whenever he's coming with this new album, I'm expecting some like deep ass shit, and I shouldn't go in with expectations, but I really don't want it to be surface level, and I don't expect it to be. But generally, that's how I see Kendrick's music. But with Push, it's like I go into a Push record just wanting some great coke rap, some great production, and just sick flows and good features, and I feel like I will not get any short of that on this project. I don't know if it'll compare to Daytona, but I kind of shouldn't expect it to because Daytona is just so good. It's just seven tracks of beauty. So I don't expect this to be as good as that. Um, but actually, I, it would actually not be hard for it to be my second favorite Push album. All right, here we go. Uh, next we got Let the Smokers Shine the Coops. Uh, I wonder what that title means. Let's go. Oh, it's gonna hit. I feel like that beat's gonna actually really hard. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that beat is hard. Pharrell on this production. No misses so far. No fucking misses, bro. He's doing this great, like, rhythm with that beat. He's going over it, man. Oh, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. That's, I like, I like it's just switching to piano. I fucking love that. <laughs> The push is just delivering. He's just delivering right now. He's he's doing what he's good at. He's just doing what he's good at. I got a fuck that was good. Um, between that and Brambleton, that's my favorite track of those two. That was fucking great. Um, Pharrell with that sample though, like that like cheering sample that he just loops with this heavy ass bass. Um, fuck that was hard. Um, and to add to that, push like did his thing on that. He just flowed great over that track fucking love that i i don't get the title still though but I, i'll probably just read genius like in a couple days and it'll probably make more sense to me um fucking love that that was great um next we got dreaming of the past with kanye um i'm interested to know what kanye is gonna be doing in this one this is one of two features from him on this album uh, this one's produced by kanye this product this album is mostly produced it also is a, has writing credit from john lennon um I, yeah, this track has writing credit from John Lennon. I probably has a John Lennon sample, if we're being honest, uh, which obviously I'm excited to hear that. Um, the, that's the thing about this album, though, is it's produced by Pharrell and Kanye. Those are both, like, in the top 10 greatest producers in the history of hip-hop. They're both so distinct with their styles, and they're so great at just really knowing how to produce Gribby. And Kanye, production with Push, has it ever missed? Like, give me one example where Push was not phenomenal over yay production um we got dreaming of the past though with kanye and i, I want to hear what the, these two are bringing to the table man they're always a great duo so let, let's hear it man uh dreaming of the past let's go that's not push singing that's push singing i might be wrong but if that's push singing that's actually kind of crazy fuck with that that's crazy so i just checked uh genius yep that that is push T singing on that hook uh, not familiar with that at all, but honestly, it's kind of great. His energy, man, his fucking, he's there. He's fully there right now. There he is. There's Yeezy. Yeezy. That's a great bar. That's a fucking great bar. Fuck, I gotta talk about that. I think Kanye should have had a longer verse. Because, like, the little bit he had... It wasn't even, like, mixed all that great, I'll be honest. Uh, but I liked it. I liked this very brief part on that. That overall was a very nice track. It had this very fun sample in the back. It had Pusha T rapping about, you know, what he's good at. The hook, I don't know if that hook is a sample, but it kind of doesn't sound like a sample. And considering the fact that on uh, Neck and Wrist, he kind of does a similar kind of singing thing, um, I kind of am wondering right now, like, was he flat out just singing? On that track i don't know but i love it honestly i love that track that was really fucking solid um uh, i will say it's about kanye because there's that bar he said that was uh i used to watch fresh prince and dream right on the house um i didn't i could have bought it but i didn't like how the i forget it was it's like a small detail it's like the gypsies or something. it's some i forget what it is 
There was some line in that. And I don't know if I get the correct like meaning of that bar, but what how I interpret it is it's basically, it's, it's like a flex of how far he's come. Cause he's like, I used to watch TV and look at this massive house. And I was like, I need to own that. And then when I finally got to the point where I could own it, I flat out was so rich and I had so much value to the point where that one little detail was the bread deal breaker for me because he's Kanye. So it's like, he looked at us, he's like, that's cool, but I don't like the one design. I could get something way better. So there's something about that. I don't know if that's the intention of it. I don't know if maybe the last half of that bar maybe is a little more, you know, depth. Maybe, maybe there's a different meaning to the bar. Maybe it's way less deep than I think it is, but I quite like that. I, if that's the message, I think he really delivers that well. Overall, I really like that track. Um, overall, I don't know. I That might be my favorite track so far. I don't know, though. Uh, I do really like that, though. It was very good. Um, uh, we got Neck and Wrist next, which I already listened to that one. It, you can go watch this. My latest video, it's... You can go watch that reaction if you want to. Uh, it's, I think, my most viewed song reaction of all time. Uh, next, we got Just So You Remember. Uh, this one, I'm going in every track looking at who's producing it, just because I I like, I like want to know who we got on the production here. We got, uh, we got, it uh, looks like Ye is partly on production, but it's mostly Boogs the Beast. Uh, so it's a different producer here, but let's go Just So You Remember. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll hear it, I'll hear it. We kept the vanilla ships, Mitch by his Mitch, we built up our villages. Energy is hard here. Hard as well. This is so much different than the other tracks, and I really fucking like it. Fuck, that was like grimace. That was angry. <laughs> Man, Push really just spent that track just like being Escobar and shit. Like, that whole track is basically Push just like. I'm fucking badass. Let me explain. Like, and it's not this kind of badass. It's like, I got so many hoes. I got so much money. It's like, no, I sell crazy amount of crack. That's like the whole theme of that track. I mean, that's the whole theme of Push's entire catalog. Uh, next, we got Rock and Roll, which has Kanye and Cuddy, which this track is interesting because it's supposedly supposed to be the last Kanye Cuddy collab. Do I believe that? No. Uh, but. Cuddy does not seem very interested in doing more collabs with Ye, which I wouldn't blame him uh, if Kanye just shut you out of the album simply because you took a picture with Pete Davidson. I would not blame you for being pissed at that. But I hope we get a more prominent Ye feature on this track. Um, and I'm really excited to hear Cuddy on this. I don't think Cuddy's ever featured on a Push album. And I, I think there's a reason why. Because uh, he doesn't fit with the style a lot. But I, I want to hear what he's going to do on this. I just, it also just hit me Rick Ross is not in this album, which is actually a little shocking. All right, here we go. Rock and roll. Uh, Kanye featuring, or Kanye, push a fuck, fuck. Push a T featuring Kid Sea Ghost, basically. Okay, let's go. That's Cuddy? That's Cuddy? Fuck. Fuck, that's hard as hell, bro. Fuck, the flow and that, that rhythm. Oh, that's good. That's good as hell, bro. The, the, the edits on Cuddy's vocals are really interesting. I really like them, honestly. I'm sorry, man. Kanye's got a great singing voice. Like, it gets called it a lot, but I think he's really good at singing, honestly. All right, uh, rock and roll. That was fucking hard as hell, honestly. Um, that was a good track for me because... I feel like everybody got to shine. I am a little disappointed Kanye didn't really get to actually rap. I do quite like his singing voice on here. Overall, though, if we compare the two features on this, Kanye did not do nearly as much of this project as I thought he would. I thought he was straight up, like, producing the album and then, like, Push was rapping it. But no, he kind of is just here. You know, he he's given two features. First one was kind of fun, but it was only a few bars. And then this one's like a singing feature, and it wasn't bad. Uh, but honestly, we're talking feature white. Cuddy, I think, fucking was way better than Kanye on that track. He was way more purposeful. His hook was great. His final you know, solo at the end was great. Uh, Push also delivered it with great flow and great bars in the two other parts of the song. I would got to say, though, with the production I got, because I'm 90% sure. Uh, I've never checked an album's production so much. So This one is produced by Pharrell and Yates. That's why the beat is so good. It's both these guys. Um... Overall, on the B part, the, it was great. I fucking loved it. Um, overall, great track. Uh, honestly, I don't have much to say. It was just a really good track. All three artists brought their game. I wish Kanye had an actual rap verse, but overall, it's still a great track. Um, here we go. We got Call My Bluff. Here we go. Like a FedEx truck. He's flat out singing. He's just singing. I, do not, I didn't expect that, but it's kind of great, actually. 
On time like the Amazon truck I can see some niggas around there right Actually, about that Amazon truck thing, that's not very accurate all the time. From hotels was popular. Okay, he's kind of using that sleazy-ish flow from neck and wrist. So he's using a little bit more of a relaxed, kind of sleazy-ish flow. And the beat's a little more low-key, laid back. So it's different, and I like it, honestly. A Call My Bluff is a pretty good track. I don't think it's inherently one of my favorites so far, but I do like it. I, I kind of like just how more laid back the flow is, though. It's Like I said, it's a little similar to Neck and Wrist. I don't think it's as uh, good as Neck and Wrist's flow. I don't think it's as creative as that track was. This one's just like, oh, it's a pretty nice flow. Okay, next we got uh, Scrape It Off with uh, Lil Uzi and Don Tolliver. I'm interested to hear that, because I never thought I'd hear Pusha T, Lil Uzi, and Don Tolliver. However, um, I'm gonna check because I'm I'm praying that we got Pharrell on that production because Uzi over Pharrell production has proven to be very yeah it's Pharrell on that production. Um, we'll see how this one goes. Um, I'm interested to hear it. I Uzi's always been great over Pharrell production and Don Tolliver is the kind of artist that I'm like I'm interested to see him on a track. I'm not a huge fan of his solo work, um, but I do like him overarchingly. So he did do Moon, which is straight up one of the most beautiful hip hop songs of recent times. Uh, but here we go. Scrape it off. Let's go. Yeah, Uzi over that like slow Pharrell production is interesting and I like it. Uh, overarchingly, I really like that track. Um, I don't know if it's actually one of my favorites because I do like Uzi on it. I actually do think it's a little, it's a very different thing for him and I do like it. Uh, Don Tolliver didn't really do anything different of his breed. He did his typical hook. It, it's all right. Um, Push had a great verse as well. Uh, that My Boy rhyme scheme went on for a little bit, but I like it. I think the overall thing, though, about this track is, I don't know, I think generally speaking, despite the features being unusual, it's not really that different from the past couple of tracks. It's good, but I don't think it's really, like, in the top five probably strongest tracks on the album. Uh, I like it. Just don't. I'm not, I'm not insane about it. I think it's good, though. I do quite like it. And it proves that even though this collab is not something you'd expect, it works pretty well. Um, now we have Hear Me Clearly featuring uh, Nigo, which I've already heard. It's a great track, great energy, great production. Love that track. Uh, we got Open Air next, uh, which is a pretty quick track, uh, but it does have some pretty cool, good features on it. It's got Pharrell back on the production of it. So when I meant features, I meant production, by the way. There's no feature on the track. Uh, so here we go. Uh, open Air. Let's go. Selling cocaine in the open air. The boats is there. The notes straight to the there, fucking point with that first bar. There. Straight to the point. So there's no actual reaction to this track. Not because it's like like I couldn't get a reaction. It's just there was really not a lot to say while listening. Open air, I do I do like that track. But I have to be like honest. I do like the sample of the energy. Overall, I do like the track. But I gotta be honest. I think to some degree, it it's, it's not like the most creative track on the project. It does sound a little bit like neck and wrist production-wise. Um, but I do quite like it. And I do quite like the way the track comes together. I don't have a ton of sand, and it's a quick, nice two-minute track. Uh, next, we got Pray For You, uh, which is Eclipse Reunion. Uh, this is the third one in the past little while, because we also had uh, Punch Bowl. Uh, is that the track Punch Bowl with uh, Nigo? That was uh, another Eclipse uh, reunion. But we also, a uh, few years ago, had uh, on uh, Use This Gospel. There was Eclipse Reunion. Uh, but here we go. We got another one. Uh, we got Labyrinth on the hook, too. Weirdly, who I've been very into lately, who is a great vocalist. So let's, here we have to offer here. I pray for you. And this is the final track on the project. If I've ever heard Labyrinth with an organ chord and singing, that's very, very Labyrinth of him. Also, it's produced by Ye, so, I mean, got a lot of talent here. It didn't hit me until editing that I, like, this thought just hit me. Uh, Kanye... You should really add Labyrinth to Donda 2. Like, like I just need Labyrinth on a Donda-style track. Like, seriously, they, they fit together, like, so well. I can't believe it hasn't happened. Like, just, just imagine that, bro. Come on, just imagine that. It reminds me of I'm Tired, interestingly enough. That, the track from before, right? interestingly enough. Yeah, it kind of sounds like more low-key I'm Tired, which is kind of funny, actually. Interesting. You see the phoenix rise from the Ooh, ashes. Ooh, that like came in hard. Quite that quite came in hard as fuck. Wow. Is this son named Bricks? Huh, that's interesting. So, uh, Pusha T's son is actually named uh, Nigel, uh, but his middle name is Bricks. 
Uh, and I don't know if that counts as like a first name or something, but that's true. He named his son Bricks to some degree. But heaven only knows I will dig Fuck, another he is so ready on this track. Like My God, bro. Bro. X told you hell is hot. I told you repent. Oh, X tell you hell is hot. Okay, DMX, DMX shout out. I like that, I like that. I thought it was talking about XXX Tentacion for a second. Oh, it's putting on, it's putting on Daiko. Okay, overall, that's got to be uh, one of my favorite uh, tracks so far. Um, but I do got to I do gotta look at this, because the second verse, fuck yeah, it's so true. But uh, Malice has such a similar style to Push. And it didn't hit me until this track. Like I've been like I listened to the go through all their albums, but I guess now it just it just hit me now. Like fuck, like his first second, I was like push is coming in for a second verse. No, that and then it hit me. I was like no, that doesn't sound right. That's malice because malice and push have actually very interestingly similar styles. Um, I mean obviously they would. They're both their duo, but it, it's interesting to me. You know, uh, labyrinth on the hook was great. What a great choice with those chords. They sounded beautiful and amazing. I fucking love labyrinth. So that was really cool to hear that. Um, overall, that was a little bit more of an emotional track, and it basically gave a very solid outro to the album. Uh, the overall uh, thing with this project, I will say, is he really knows how to construct a track list, which is something I appreciate in hip-hop now because it doesn't happen as much. But overall, yeah, Push fucking delivered. This is interesting to me because Co-Crap has had a great year so far. I mean, we had the phenomenal God Don't Make Mistakes by Conway. Um, really solid Tana Talk 4 by Benny the Butcher. Now we got It's Almost Dry, Push a T, um, which just, I gotta be honest, it's probably my second favorite Push a T project at this point. Um, and we're probably gonna get um, a new Freddie Gibbs record later this year, which I'm fucking hyped as hell for. We're also probably gonna get a new West Side Gun project this year. This is a great year for Co Crap. Um, thing about this album though, it's just, it's, it's the example that Push is a really valuable figure in hip hop because this album is so tight. It's 35 minutes. Um, it's not nearly as killer no filler as Daytona is, but it's still pretty short. It's still pretty brief. Um, and the thing I just appreciate about that is it's, it feels like it's so focused on great music, not num no numbers. It doesn't care. Uh, Pharrell has great production across most of the tracks and whenever Ye or anyone else comes on, they just know how to produce great tracks. It's the type of album that you can tell there's probably a lot of shit recorded for this that is just not going to be released. And that's kind of fine because we're giving 12 like great songs back to back, great features. It's the type of album that you know Pusha T has been working on this for a few years now and it makes sense. You can tell it's a lot of effort's been put into this. Um, do I like it as much as Daytona? Do I think it's nearly as just consistently just killer no filler as daytona that's the best word to describe that album i don't think it is uh, but do i think it's really solid and proves that despite being 20 years into his career he is really at one of the strongest peaks of his career fuck yeah uh push the t kills it again this album is a really fucking great time um great features great production overall a uh, push yeah i really fucking like this album i'll probably review in the next couple days i might not because I've kind of come to the conclusion that there's no need to give album reviews to albums where my opinions don't change that much. So if I listen to this a couple more times and it, my rating doesn't really change, by the way, I'm pretty sure my rating for this would be about an A minus, but if I kind of go through it and I kind of review it and I talk about it and there's just not like much more to say about it, I don't know why I would try and throw a review at it just if there's not really a ton more. I've said here that I, you know, would have to say in review, but I might do a review. We'll see how the weekend goes. Um, but overall, fucking love this album. Uh, really, really great shit here. Um, what do you guys think on It's Almost Dry? Let me in the comment section below. Uh, the next few weeks are stacked. Because next week, we got Future's new album, which I've been waiting a very long time for. It's finally coming out. Uh, the week after, we have Jack Harlow's. Actually, the week after on that Wednesday, no, Tuesday, we have a new album from the duo themselves, Black Star, produced by Madly, which I cannot wait to hear that. Um, we got a new Jack Harlow record that Friday. I've been really liking his new shit, so I'm very excited to hear that one. And then the following Friday, it's, it really is happening on May 13th, Kendrick Lamar is releasing his fifth studio album. I need to repeat that because it hasn't stuck with me yet. Kendrick Lamar is releasing his fifth studio album in four fucking weeks. It's been five years. I've spent every day waiting and it's finally happening. Uh, pretty much, in my opinion, the greatest artist in hip hop. So um, y'all know, I, 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 I'm i gonna react to it obviously, but I'm like, should I do more? I don't know. I'm fucking ready for this album though. Uh, 
Uh, anything else after that? After that, there's not a ton of lists for the 20th or the 27th. Uh, what do you guys think on New Push Daily? in the comment section below. See you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.